if there are some asynotic congenital heart diseases, then there obviously must be some synotic ones as well, and I'm afraid there are. And these are the ones you read in the newspapers. They're called blue babies. They're born blue. These patients, if they have an auricular septal defect or a ventricular septal defect, an ASD or a VSD, must have something else in order to make them blue. And the one that you've probably all heard of and know of is called the Tetralogy of Fallow. Tetralogy means four things, and here they are. The first part of that tetralogy is that the patient has a VSD, a ventricular septal defect. That wouldn't make you blue, because oxygenated blood is simply going to go from the left to the right, and therefore oxygenated blood is still coming out of the aorta. The second part of that tetralogy is that patients have pulmonary stenosis. That will make you blue because it will increase the pressure on the right side of the heart and the shunt now reverses. And instead of oxygenated blood going from the left to the right, now deoxygenated blood, desaturated hemoglobin is going to go from the right to the left and end up in the peripheral circulation. And it is the fact that you have desaturated hemoglobin in your peripheral circulation is what makes you blue. And it is reckoned that you need 5 grams of that. Before you appear blue clinically, you normally have 15 grams per 100 ml. If a third of that is desaturated, you will look blue clinically. The third part of that tetralogy is that they have an overriding aorta. The aorta, instead of exiting from the left ventricle, as it does normally, it now rides across both ventricles, so that desaturated hemoglobin Deoxygenated blood is being pumped by the right ventricle directly into the aorta. So pulmonary stenosis will make you blue, but an overriding aorta will help you go bluer. And the fourth part of that tetralogy is that they have right ventricular hypertrophy. But that's unimportant. I mean, if, and it's not surprisingly, if you have congenital pulmonary stenosis, you're bound to have right ventricular hypertrophy. But I think old fellow was looking around for something just to make it four and he put that there. But that is unimportant. A ventricular septal defect is important, but that wouldn't make you blue. Pulmonary stenosis is important and will make you blue, and an overriding aorta will help you go bluer. But how do we pick patients up with fallow? Well, that's easy, because they're born blue, they're blue babies, and they have finger clubbing. You recall me telling you previously there are two cardiac lesions which produce finger clubbing? We've had them both now. One of them is infective endocarditis, and the other is any form of cyanotic congenital or cyanotic heart disease, a condition in which there is expansion of the distal compartment of the fingers. So if you held them sideways, you lose the angle between the nail, which is this thing, and the nail bed, which is behind it, the thing behind it. There is normally an obtuse angle. That gets flattened out, and there is soft tissue expansion of the fingers so that it looks like the end of a drumstick, and that is called finger clapping. There is a big right ventricle because it says so up there and because I told you earlier on, if you have congenital pulmonary stenosis, you're bound to have right ventricular hypertrophy. Or you can pick this defect up by the Doppler ultrasound. Or you can show that there is desaturation. If you put a catheter in the, right, in the left ventricle, you can show that there is desaturation. The risk of infective endocarditis with phallus tetralogy is small. So patients with phallus do not need to be put on prophylactic antibiotics. This can be treated surgically. If the baby is very young, what they do is the anastomose, an artery, the subclavian artery, to the pulmonary artery, beyond the stenosis so that the lungs are oxygenated. This is called the Blaylock calcic procedure. It's not a perfect thing to do. 
but it's sort of an emergency operation where babies go through in order to stay alive. But in a baby or in a child over the age of one, this is eminently treatable these days. So you close off the VSD, you put a new pulmonary valve or you split the one that there is and you shift the position of the aorta so that it doesn't exit from both ventricles and exits from the left. The right ventricular hypertrophy will disappear of its own accord and happy days. Mom and dad can breathe again and our patient, our baby who was previously knocking on heaven's door, can start looking healthy and normal again. And this is called a total correction. Some other interesting things happen when you see patients or babies or kids with fallows, you see them squat. You see them squat on the floor because they are less short of breath by doing that. This is because you can stop and occlude the blood going into the right auricle and take the strain of the heart in that sort of way. You see them squat in order to relieve their dyspnea.